So we continue with our last series on the mediastin and its contents. So we're winding up with the esophagus. And we say that we have three parts of the esophagus, the cervical part in the neck, the thoracic part, which is in both the superior and the posterior mediastinum, and the abdominal part. Remember, the esophagus um, leaves the thorax to the abdomen through esophageal hiatus located at T10 vertebral level, and that hiatus is also used by the vagal trunks. Name the bit in the longitudinal anastomosis, remember, and longitudinal anastomosis is the anastomosis of vessels that supply the esophagus as it traverses the cervical, thoracic, and abdominal region. So in the um, cervical portion, it's supplied by inferior thyroid, which is a branch from first part of subclavian artery. The um, thoracic portion of the esophagus is supplied by branches of the thoracic aorta, including the esophageal vessels, intestinal arteries, bronchial arteries, pericardial arteries, and posterior intercostal arteries. These are branches of the thoracic aorta. Then the abdominal portion is supplied by left gastric artery, which is from celiac trunk that's coming from the abdominal aorta. So the veins that drain the esophagus will correspond. And remember, the veins, uh, the esophagus is mainly drained by esophageal bronchial veins, which drain into the azygous system, and that forms the systemic um, niche of the esophagus. But also the venous blood of the esophagus goes into the portal circulation, and mainly the abdominal portion of the esophagus through left gastric vein will drain into the portal system. Therefore, the lower third of the esophagus becomes a site for portosystemic anastomosis. It's drained into both the portal vein and to the azygous venous system. The esophagus has three constrictions and this I'm giving you this as an assignment. Doubt what are the locations of the constrictions of the esophagus? Remember, it's mainly the portions where the esophagus has muscular sphincters and also the portions where it is crossed by the arc of the aorta and the pulmonary vessels as well as the bron bronchi. So those will form the constrictions of the esophagus. And what's the clinical significance? Remember, foreign bodies may be dislodged in this narrowed portion of the esophagus. And during endoscopic investigation, as you pass an endoscope into the esophagus, a surgeon is supposed to be aware that these constrictions exist. So the, the endoscopes have to be passed um, gently in these constrictions. So um, we now discuss the thoracic duct. It's a lymphatic channel. Okay, it contains lymph that's coming from the lower portion of the body. And the origin of this thoracic duct is what we call the cisterna chile, which is a cistern containing lymphatic. It's located opposite L1, L2. So the thoracic duct originates from the upper end of cisterna chile, which is opposite L1, L2 vertebra in the abdomen. What's the cause of the thoracic duct? Remember, it's beginning in the abdomen. So how does it get into the, the thorax? So it will pass through the aortic opening. This at T12. It passes through the aortic opening together with the aorta and the azygous vein, and it will ascend in the posterior mediastinum. In this posterior mediastinum, thoracic duct is behind the esophagus. Then as it gets to the superior mediastinum, it is to the left of the esophagus, then enters the root of the neck. Where does it terminate? The thoracic duct, together with other events that occur at the sternal angle of Louis, it crosses from the right to the left side before it terminates by emptying into the left brachiocephalic vein. So this crossing from right to left occurs at the sternal angle of Louis to T4, T5 junction. Remember, this forms our plane that divides the mediastinum into superior and inferior mediastinum. What are the relations of the thoracic duct in the posterior mediastinum? So, within the posterior mediastinum, the esophagus is anterior to the thoracic duct. The thoracic vertebra are located posterior to the thoracic duct, while to the right of the thoracic duct is the azygous vein, and to the left of this duct, you find the descending aorta. So, what are the tributaries of the thoracic duct? All the area of the body, the areas of the body below the diaphragm, on both sides, right and left side, below the diaphragm. They drain to the thoracic duct through the cisterna chile. So below the diaphragm, all the lymphatics will enter cisterna chile, be drained by thoracic duct, which will empty into the left brachiocephalic vein. So it will drain lymph below the diaphragm from both sides. But above the diaphragm, the thoracic duct only drains lymph from the left half of the body. 
so it drains from both sides of the body below the diaphragm and the left side of the body above the diaphragm so all the lymphatics from these areas form the tributaries of the thoracic duct so the major trunks that form the tributaries of the thoracic ducts on the upper left half of the body include the left jugular trunk which drains the left side of the head and neck the left subclavian trunk that drains the left upper limb and the left bronchomediastinal trunk that drains the left side of the thorax so both sides below the diaphragm through cisterna chile and the left side above the diaphragm so left side above the diaphragm drains into thoracic duct through three trunks left jugular trunk that drains left side of head and neck left subclavian trunk that drains the left upper limb and the left bronchomediastinal trunk that drains the left side of the thorax then we also have a right lymphatic duct it's an equivalent to the thoracic duct remember thoracic duct is on the left this right lymphatic duct is on the right and it's formed by the union of right jugular lymph trunk the right subclavian lymph trunk and the right bronchomediastinal lymph trunk so remember the tributaries of the thoracic duct on the left above the diaphragm so their corresponding tributaries on the right above the diaphragm drain into the right lymphatic duct so the three of them unite to form the right lymphatic duct that will drain lymphatic above the diaphragm on the right side so the right jugular lymph trunk right drains right side of head and neck right subclavian lymph trunk that drains the right upper limb and the right bronchomediastinal lymph trunk that drains the right side of the thorax where will the right lymphatic duct terminate it terminates in the right brachiocephalic vein remember thoracic duct was terminating in the left brachiocephalic vein what are the nerves in the mediastinum? So we have phrenic nerve. Phrenic nerve is in superior and middle mediastinum. What's the origin of the phrenic nerve? So the root value is C3 to C5. It comes from the anterior rami of C3, C4, C5. What is the cause and relations of phrenic nerve in the thorax? So the right phrenic nerve descends to the right side of the left brachiocephalic vein. So it's located on the right side of the right brachiocephalic vein the superior vena cava, the pericardium, and the inferior vena cava. So it's towards the right side of the right border of the heart and its contents. So the right brachiocephalic vein, superior vena cava, pericardium, inferior vena cava on the right side. Then the left phrenic nerve descends on the left side of the pericardium. So on the left of the arc of the aorta and the pericardium. What are the branches of the phrenic nerve? It gives motor branches that innervate the diaphragm, responsible for movement of the diaphragm. It also gives sensory branches, and these sensory branches innervate the central part of the diaphragmatic pleura. So the central part of the um, pleura, sensory innervation is by phrenic nerve, the fibrous pericardium, and the parietal layer of the serous pericardium, the peritoneum, okay, as well as the... Um, the three p's sensory innervation to the three um, membranes is usually by phrenic nerve so pericardium pleura and peritoneum and the phrenic nerve also innervates the biliary apparatus so it gives motor branches to the diaphragm sensory to the three p's the pleura pericardium and peritoneum the parietal layers remember the visceral layers of these membranes are have sympathetic innervation it's only the parietal layers that have somatic innervation from the phrenic nerve and phrenic nerve also innervates the biliary apparatus in the liver so other another nerve uh, found in the thorax in the mediastinum is the vagus nerve which is the 10th cranial nerve remember it supplies parasympathetic innervation to the heart and the lungs so it's located in both the superior and posterior mediastinum it's the 10th cranial nerve that originates in the medulla oblongata so in the thorax what are the relations so the right vagus descends to the right side it's on the right side so to the right of the trachea then behind the root of the right lung then it's found behind the esophagus forming the esophageal plexus so it will pass through the esophageal opening which is located at t10 um, vertebral level therefore reaching the posterior surface of the stomach the left vagus on the other side is on the left side so it's close to the arc of the aorta which is on the left behind the root of the left lung and in front of the esophagus so the left 
vagus is in front of the esophagus forming anterior vagal trunk while the right vagus is behind the esophagus forming the posterior vagal trunk both anterior and posterior vagal trunk pass through the diaphragmatic hiatus at t10 vertebral level to enter the abdomen the left vagus form the anterior vagal trunk anterior to the esophagus and innervates anterior surface of the stomach while the right vagus forms the posterior vagal trunk that will innervate posterior part of the esophagus and posterior surface of the stomach so what are the branches of the esophagus in the thorax it will send branches to the lungs to the esophagus and the right vagus innervates the heart the left vagus will give the left recurrent laryngeal nerve and this nerve left recurrent laryngeal nerve usually curves below the arc of the aorta below what we call ligamenta materiosum then it will ascend in the tracheoesophageal groove groove between trachea and esophagus to reach the neck usually the left recurrent laryngeal supplies the heart trachea esophagus and the larynx the heart trachea esophagus and the larynx so it's a branch of the vagus nerve the left vagus curving below the arc of the aorta and the ligamenta materiosum then you see it going upwards in the tracheoesophageal groove to supply the trachea esophagus and the heart so other nerves in the mediastinum we have the sympathetic trunks which are in both superior and posterior mediastinum so these trunks form the cervical part of the um, begin at the cervical part and continue as thoracic part in front of the neck of the first rib so these sympathetic trunks terminate at the thoracic the th like the thoracic part will continue as lumbar part behind the medial arcuate ligament so in the upper part of the thorax the sympathetic trunks descend in front of the heads of the ribs then in the lower part of the thorax they are at the side of the bodies of the vertebra so in front of the heads of the ribs then they are at the side of the bodies of the vertebra in the lower part of the thorax so we have ganglia that will be formed by these sympathetic trunks they're usually 11 thoracic ganglion and the first thoracic ganglion fuses with the inferior cervical ganglion to form stellate ganglion remember you have three cervical ganglia so the last the third cervical ganglia and the first thoracic ganglion forms the stellate ganglion so these are the sympathetic ganglia that are located paravertebral so what are the branches of this ganglia you have the rami uh, communicantes uh, which receive preganglionic and postganglionic also will leave this rami communicantes then you have visceral branches which are postganglionic to the heart lungs esophagus and aorta then you have visceral branches to the abdominal organs through the greater splanchnic nerves lesser splanchnic nerves lowest splanchnic nerves so those are the branches of the sympathetic trunk so sympathetic trunk are located anterior to the heads of the ribs and then at the sides of the vertebra the bodies of the vertebra and then they form ganglia and from this ganglia you have preganglionic fibers that are going to meet postganglionic fibers that correspond to the thoracic spinal nerves so remember you have three ganglia in the cervical area but in the thoracic you have 12 which are in the mediastinum the first thoracic fuses with the last cervical to form the stellate ganglia the branches of these sympathetic trunks are the rami communicantes from each ganglion and then the visceral branches to the viscera in the thorax those include the heart lungs esophagus so these are mainly the postganglionic fibers while Preganglionic fibers uh, to abdominal organs also originate from these sympathetic trunks, which are great, uh, greater splanchnic nerves, lesser splanchnic nerve, and lower splanchnic nerve. Remember, sympathetic in the body comes from thoracolumbar um, region. Yeah. So from thoracolumbar region of the spinal cord, then these nerves go to the ganglia, which are paravertebral. So we form three ganglia in the cervical region and 12 ganglia in the thoracic region. So these are the ganglia. Greater splanchnic are from the 5th to 9th, lesser splanchnic are from 10th to 11th, and lowest splanchnic is from the 12th ganglion. Thank you.